Hey everyone, and welcome to Resi Equip. In everything that we do here at Resi, we want to empower you to create your best events and create excellent, engaging environments for your audiences. And while we're thrilled to be able to provide reliable live streaming technology to help you do that, we know that we certainly don't have all the answers. And that's why in these sessions, we're bringing in experts that we know and trust who will be able to share their knowledge, their wisdom, their experience that we want to hear from and we want to share with you. Our goal for each of these classes is to help you learn production and streaming on a deeper level to most effectively reach, engage, and grow your audience. So enjoy today's event, and if you're not already, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube. There's lots of great content like this on there, as well as future Resi equips, stories, interviews, and more, all relating to live production. For today's session, we are talking metaverse. And uh, I know this term has been used a lot colloquially to describe a ton of different things. So the first question today is, what is it? How is it being used? And what opportunities does it provide for live events, church, and any type of social experience in the future? We'll discuss how and why it's being used as an outreach tool, how churches are using it to engage more people, and grow new audiences with people that might not step foot inside their door, but would be willing to engage by putting on a VR headset. And we're thrilled to be joined by two experts in digital church from an organization that we love and is super innovative in church production and outreach at large. We're speaking with Greg Gackle, team lead and pastor, and Warren Davis, director of broadcast support at Life Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. Life Church is definitely not new to unique digital outreach using tools like Second Life as early as 2007 to reach new audiences around the world. We're excited to hear from them on Metaverse and what they've learned so far and the opportunities that they see at providing churches in the future. In addition to this video, make sure you check out the link in the description with lots more resources from today's events, including a Q&A with Greg and Warren and more information about how you can get started with Metaverse Campus for your church. So let's get right into it. Welcome to Resi Equip. Hey everybody, welcome to Resi Equip. We are so thrilled to have you on, and especially today uh, because uh, it is our, our second Resi Equip, which like you uh, saw during the introduction, is really just a time for us to nerd out and geek out over whatever it is that we feel like uh, talking, you know, talking about and sharing with you. And uh, so it's really our honor and our privilege to be able to do this and uh, to be able to bring in some awesome people that uh, we've been able to uh, meet over the years and uh, to have, have some really great conversations with them. And uh, uh, as you may know or may uh, be familiar with already, this is our first Resi Equip that we're actually hosting within the metaverse. And uh, we're going to figure out, uh, ask our, our guests in just a second what the heck that actually even means. But uh, if you are maybe engaging with us in the metaverse, uh, welcome. I'm awkwardly standing over in the corner in the space. So make sure you come over and say, uh, say hey, wave. I probably won't respond because uh, I'm... I'm here, but <laughs> uh, we, uh, we're, we're really excited to be able to have this, this virtual space uh, present uh, that, uh, that folks can, can gather around and watch today's events in. Um, also, Quartz and Justin from Resi are both in, in the room there as well, as well as I think Jason. Uh, so make sure you say hey, hey to them as well. But I don't want to let any more time go by before I introduce our awesome guests today, uh, who uh, we talked about in the introduction, Greg Gackle and Warren Davis from Life Church. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, thank you guys for having us. We're super excited just to be talking about this. Um, just a lot of opportunity. Yeah, for, for sure. The church. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I said, it's really timely, and I think. It's, you know, for half of the people watching today, it's probably something that they're familiar with, have engaged with in some way. The other half maybe has heard this term metaverse in the news or on Twitter or whatever, and, uh, and you know, is, is really just trying to say, okay, what is this thing, um, and how is Life Church using it? So I'd love to maybe just kind of start there uh, as one of the buzzwords for 21, 21 leading into 2022, what is the metaverse? Yeah, and that, that is the question because it is so new and it's the posture we had when we first jumped into it to really understand what is it, how could it be leveraged, so excited to talk about that. Simply the metaverse is a, if you equate it to even a universe that is full of worlds, the metaverse is a digital universe with an infinite amount of worlds that could be created where different communities could engage in different ways. So it can happen through a desktop experience and you mentioned Second Life in 2007, we experienced that more 
two dimensional, but 3D experience on a desktop that you're going through worlds on, similar to what you see in games today. But then really what is advanced in technology now is the headsets, the VR headsets that you can put in and be fully immersed into these worlds and experiences and honestly feel a little bit closer and have these meaningful engagements with other people. And so that's really the, what we talk about the metaverse is this expansion of infinite worlds that you can create to connect in community. And then there's another part of it. You might hear the term like mixed reality or augmented reality. And this is the idea that now in a physical world, you could have AR glasses that actually will overlay digital pieces or engaging um, items within your physical spaces that otherwise you couldn't see. Think about like what Pokemon Go app was when that came out where you could see these creatures and play games that were actually built to be in a physical or mapped to a physical space. There's other things coming out, I think, in the near future that will, that will show even the benefits of what a mixed reality experience could look like in your physical spaces. And so that all is the metaverse. Anything you would add to that? Yeah, I, I just think it's interesting that you talk about it being immersive. And so I know last year I was on the podcast, and one of the things that I mentioned was that we are always positioning ourselves to take advantage of opportunities that we don't even know exist yet. Yeah. And so we were asking ourselves the question of, Obviously, CHOP or Church Online Platform is a very valid and necessary expression of, of what we do. And the pandemic kind of mm. pushed everybody into there when you couldn't meet physical. All you could do was do online. And so the question we were asking is, how can we make that experience feel more uh, realistic? Mm. Or mm. And now we're taking that two-dimensional experience and putting it in the metaverse, you're, you're able to just step more mm -hmm. into that and uh, experience that in a, in a newer and more robust way. And so it's just amazing that we're taking those steps uh, just a year and 18 months later. Yeah. And really like our heart is to leverage technology to advance the gospel. Yeah. And that's the piece I think that is just really core to the DNA and, and the call that has been on Life Church. And so this just felt like a natural step to explore and see what are the new ways that we could reach people through this medium. Mm -hmm. I love that. That was actually, it's funny, I don't think I've ever told you guys this, but that was my, you know, we talked about Second Life in 2007. That was actually my first encounter with Life Church, uh, oh, no which, which is amazing because I saw it in there and I'm like, what is this, this Life Church thing? Because uh, I was just kind of exploring around and like playing around with this, you know, Second Life app on, on my computer or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. And, and we'll get into a little bit more, you know, asking some questions about the audience and the kind of crowd that you're bringing in and everything. But I know even for me and my personal experience, this digital outreach was my first experience with Life Church. Um, and I was already, you know, familiar with church at the time. So it, it for me, was just something that was really cool and, and really awesome to be able to engage in a ministry in that way. So. Um, super cool. So, you know, the second question for this, um, why does it matter? Why does, you know, I, I, I think uh, I see this, this, maybe you'll talk about it. I see this kind of motto that's plastered all around the, 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 the walls and within the digital, digital space. But like, why does it matter to be able to be doing these innovative things and to be creating uh, evangelistic opportunities that are immersive for your audience? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and really, just personally, I'm passionate about this subject. And, you know, we say all the time, innovation happens where passion meets constraint. Mm. And I think first and foremost, it's the mission that draws us to, to innovate. I think personally, it's also a way that honestly, we express the image of God that's created in us to be creators. And so part of it is like actually fully living out who God has created us to be in ways that we innovate. And sometimes we can equate innovation to just technology, but the fact yeah. is we innovate on new strategies, when we innovate on new sure. ministries, mm -hmm. like innovation has always been a thread in the, since the birth of the church. Like you think about Paul and the Roman roads and how he's, how he had scribes translate his letters and send them, you know, down these roads to all these churches. Like that was an innovative thing to do in that day. Not everybody was doing that. And then you look at just the progression of how technology has continued to advance God's word, God's message, God's church, God's facilities. Like, you know, the, the list is endless. And so this is just another way that the church is going to innovate to advance the mission of Christ. Yeah, I, I love what you said there. And that, to restate, it would be the author of, creati uh, the author of creation is the father of creativity. Mm -hmm. so we find ways to be creative in the way we express uh, our church. Um, but also in the platforms that we uh, put our message out there on. And I think of like in 1994 on the Today Show when they were first talking about what even <laughs> is the internet. Yeah, I remember that. 
like this clip of Bryant Gumbel and he's laughing about NBC.com and all this stuff. It's like we don't know if the metaverse is going to be this paradigm shifting technology that is integral to the human experience in 30 years. Yeah. Or it's going to go the way of the 3D television. We're yeah, not sure. Sure. What you know is that there are people there today. And so to use your words, it, it represents an evangelistic opportunity. And we feel that we are called yeah. to leverage technology to reach people yeah. for Christ. So we're going to yeah. go there. To- and especially when things are so new and there's still a lot to learn, like we will we'll avoid absolutes when it comes to this. We're really exploring and discovering and learning how to best leverage for the mission. But we're willing to take those risks for the sake of the gospel yeah. and to advance what God is doing. And I love our pastor says it. He says, you know, we we want to have a posture to be a student and not a critic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really how we're approaching this and how we approach any kind of new innovation that we're seeking. Yeah. That's really good. That's awesome. What was what was kind of the conversation like when when you guys first so obviously um, we'll get into a little bit of the technical how to and like how churches can do this, you know, and, and how and why and, and all that, but like, what was that conversation like for you, for you guys? Was there any hes- hesitation? Was there any thoughts that kind of came up in this planning process of, okay, these VR headsets, people are starting to use them. People are getting them for Christmas. This, the, people are showing up in this space. Um, yeah. yeah. Was there any consideration or process that led up to you guys building out this space? Yeah, it's, it's a great story, honestly. So um, Ryan Sharp and myself, we're just paying attention to the cultural trends, mm-hmm. obviously the things you mentioned. Um, you know, VR is not new. It's been around for a long time. And I kind of joke, it's like the zombie that won't go away. But actually, there's there's a lot of things right now that say there's more advantages to how it's being used and how it has been used prior. And really, I think a lot of technology is caught up. There's a lot more streams of audiences and, and people um, leveraging it, but for different means of community. And so, and then to your point, a lot of big tech investors just advancing the product too is helping us keep a tap on where is culture like leading this tool to be a place for people to have meaningful connections in, mm-hmm. in a variety of ways. So we're paying attention to that. And honestly, we just said, hey, let's just get a pair of these goggles and learn. And that was like, I think late November, maybe early December. And so Ryan and I jumped in and we started visiting places and learning about how, just how to use the tool. And honestly, that was the biggest barrier is actually just putting on the headset and just jumping in. Because it's, it's one thing to explain it all. It's a whole other thing, like our people in the metaverse right now, to be experiencing it live, right? And there's just this aha moment that happens when you realize, oh, this could actually be used for X, Y, Z, or whatever mission your church is called to. And so for us, we jumped in, honestly, just testing it. And we didn't broadcast it or promote it. We're just like, let's see what it looks like. Let's get the video stream up and see what happens. Like, will people show up? Will this thing, right. you know, happen? Yeah. And... And we were actually in the testing phase and we had, I think, posted something just very innocently on social about something we're just exploring. And then it just kind of blew up and it became like, oh, this is an actual thing. We're actually, we're actually doing this now. And so that's where we've been for the last 10 weeks, just saying, yep, we're going to explore the space and and have church and connect with people and see life change. Mm, That's good. That's so cool. I, I, I'd love to know too, just like within y'all's ministry of like the ministry leaders within Life Church and Pastor Craig and, and others, like you know, when, 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 when y'all come to them with kind of plans for these, Hey, there's this, this, this new thing called metaverse and we're going to do, do an outreach within it. Like, is there, is there any, like, is that, is that weird at all? Or is it just like, Oh yeah, this is, this is awesome. This is what our church does. Like, what's that culture like for you guys within your church? Yeah, I think there's, there are, there's discerning that happens, but there's also just what I love about our culture is there's definitely a freedom to explore. And especially when the mission is the driver, Yeah, like it, it, we also have another axiom. We say like latest doesn't mean greatest. Mm-hmm. So just because this is a new technology doesn't mean it's going to be the greatest technology. And so we'll, we'll just approach it with that posture and just jump in and learn. And so we might not have the full definition or the full scope of what this is going to look like five years from now, like, or even one year from now, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's kind of the culture and the ethos of our church just to innovate and learn and then adapt, like continually adapt, um, to what it, what will actually drive the mission forward in the most effective ways. Yeah, I just think it's just a part of our DNA yeah. as we leverage technology to reach people. And so it's funny when we look back now at the launch of the Church Online platform in 06, yeah. uh, there were a lot of critics then who, is that even a real expression of church? Mm-hmm. And, and that looks totally different through a lens 15 years later yeah. of obviously that's an effective uh, tool and a place for us to meet. And so... I just think with these opportunities, Greg said, we're discerning on what we go after because we can't go after mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but when something like this pops up and it's a, it's a community that we have the potential to reach, uh, we're going to err on the side of trying to do something to reach people, yeah. uh, then not. And, uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. It's good. It's cool. So Warren, you hit on something that I think we'll, we'll go back into, um, maybe, uh, some, some seminary, uh, discussion on, <laughs> on what, what is church? Um, because that expression of church is obviously changing and has changed. And I think when online church first came out, there were questions about what is church? Is this church? Um, and now that new expressions, digital expressions are coming along, um, that same question is, is there. And so, um, you know, I guess what would you say to that in terms of a question that you've probably got in a different context in the past about what is church and how can the metaverse be a church? What is church? That's, that's, that's quite a loaded question. Yeah. Uh, obviously every expression of church from even the early time, right after Christ through today, uh, that expression has continued to evolve. And mm-hmm. pastor Craig says that our methods change, but the message stays the same. And so we're comfortable with that mm-hmm. expression evolving. Uh, but for me, if I could define it, I would say church is a place that we can connect with God and connect with other people. And so whether that's in a building or whether that's in a digital environment, um, there are opportunities for us to facilitate that connection. So that's the way, very non-seminary uh, <laughs> answer uh, that I would, I would describe it. And so it's a place where obviously we connect with God, we worship him for who he is and what he's doing in our lives. Uh, but then we connect with other believers and that doesn't yeah. have to be at a physical space um, we can totally connect with people digitally. In fact, that's where a lot of people nowadays uh, live uh, their most probably even authentic lives is their mm. person that they present uh, to the world through uh, social media mm. uh, and through other uh, avenues. So that would be my, again, very non-seminary, didn't go, <laughs> uh, but that's my answer to that. Greg, what would you add? Yeah, I, th- I think the beautiful thing about the church is we're not at the finish line yet. Like mm. there, there is going to be a day where the church is fully the church and we're not on that side of heaven right now. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is Christ told us like we are one body, many parts. And the yeah. beautiful thing about the church is its diversity and the variety of its expressions, the variety of the missions that it's called to. And I think that's, that's the thing we lean into this with it is like, it's not the end all be all solution uh, sure. or the cookie cutter that every church needs to adapt to, but it is an expression of the church. And I love how our leaders word it that, man, it is equally valuable, but effectively different. Yeah. Equally valuable, but effectively different. And it means if digital is the way that you feel called to reach the other end of the world, then do it. If it isn't, then don't do it. And yeah. so, so that's really the piece of this, that I think how you define church, people gathering, worshiping, opening God's word encouraging one another, discipling one another, those things can happen in a digital context as well as a physical. And where your church might feel differently about the physical things that you operate in as a church, then bring that physical solution to your digital community in yeah. creative ways. And so we found ways to do that, whether it's through baptism or communion, um, but there might be different ways that you would choose to express that. So that's my kind of long-winded answer. Sorry, it's yeah. not concise, but but that is the heart of it. The beautiful thing is the church is expressed very differently, and I think embracing that is is the right thing. Yeah, I love it. And I love how open that, that, that y'all are to um, equipping other churches, whether that, you know, and this has always been, I, I think like, I mean, this is a whole ministry in and of itself of you guys of, hey, we're, we're going to create these expressions that we see that have opportunities with the next generation, with people that exist within this paradigm, and we're going to equip other churches to be able to do it as well. Um, and so I know, um, you know, what we'll mention uh, open um, at, 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 at some point as well, but um, lots of great resources that, that y'all provide in order to equip uh, folks to be able to use it within their, within their, their space as well. Um, so I love that. Um, you know, one, one, one big question I want to kind of ask, just kind of leading into talking about some of the opportunities of Metaverse specifically, um, I've heard lots of great stories from just digital church in general, and lots of great stories um, of the, the number of people that have been reached through church online platform. And um, obviously, Metaverse is still early days, and, and like you've said, could kind of, you know, take off and be the next big thing, or, or it might not. And, you know, we'll just be ready no matter what it is. But 
Uh, how, what opportunities have you already seen through being in the metaverse? Yeah, it's great. So, so just kind of dipping our toe in and getting started. The, the one thing that honestly like catapulted this, which was one of the most meaningful moments was, you know, we give a clear salvation call at the end of every message. And Craig, um, is the strongest at doing that. He does it every week. And the beauty is he, we always ask someone to raise their hand. And so we had this moment where we realized we, we saw someone in the metaverse who we know is physically raising their hand and their avatars following Mm. for them to receive Christ. And so for us, that was such a turning moment to say like, you know what? People respond to this. And as we jump into their stories, we've seen lives change. Now almost 30 people since our launch have received Christ. And so just hearing stories of life change and, and I think too, the, the challenge I'd say for anybody jumping into digital is to really try not to unmarry what is happening physically that's, that's attached so to that digital. So good. Mm-hmm. And we use the term, you know, hybrid church, and you've heard maybe the term fidgetal. But the truth is that the, the church and technology has always been this. Like church online platform was never absent of someone in a physical space, whether that's their home, coffee shop, mm-hmm. or a hospital, that is being impacted supernaturally by what God is doing in that moment to then change their world and change their environment. And so that's the piece of this too. I love to see like, it's very easy to say like, oh, the metaverse, it's this whole like digital uh, detachment when really we've got to see that there are people, real people in real lives that are connecting in these worlds. So. I have nothing to add. That's great. <laughs> I love I do, that. I do love the story. The first time I heard of the avatar raising their hand yeah. and it's just like, on church online platform, there's the button I click here to receive Christ. And that's great. Yeah. Uh, but just to envision somebody physically in their space, uh, following, uh, what they would do, uh, if they were in one of our campuses, it was mm-hmm. just a meaningful, meaningful moment. Some of the, maybe what you're trying to get to too, some of the like unique things about the metaverse that we've, we, we learned early on is that a couple things like we, we notice it's actually, it feels like a safer place for those who may have social anxiety or mm-hmm. maybe more actually just introverted, and so jumping into a space with a lot of people, but actually with within the metaverse kind of feels a little bit safer. And so we found that that's been a meaningful way for some of those people to connect. Obviously, those who are hospitalized, we've had some great, just amazing stories that have come through. We have a, a young kid named Zach and his mom who attend weekly. And jumping into their story, found out that Zach had a friend who passed away from cancer. And he journeyed with his friend through this. And honestly, the thing that helped Zach not feel locked to a hospital bed was his headset, mm-hmm. his VR headset. And upon passing away, Zach felt so moved and his mom to actually partner with an organization who is donating now he- VR headsets to children in hospitals so that they can actually try to feel like they're connecting and having a normal life to a degree um, outside sure. of their current physical condition. And so there's, there are opportunities with those who are you know homebound, hospital-bound, um, those with social anxiety, those with introversion. The other piece of this is you're going to see the gamut of people connecting. I think what we expected to see was this just huge gamer audience. Right. And maybe at a certain age range. But the fact is we've seen like from, you know, teenagers all the way to 90 year olds. I met a, I met a woman in the metaverse who was in her 60s who's been in, the met, in VR for 20 years building her own like Star Trek worlds that she invited me to. And so I was just very surprised, I think, of the assumptions I had about it. But when jumping into it, just seeing the community um, opportunities. And then a a lot of what we learned, even within church online world, was just the power of anonymity. That in a digital context, you could be as forward and understanding of like who Mm -hmm. I am to a person, or you could just pick a cute username, right? Or something that just says a little bit about your personality. But with that anonymity, actually translates to a lot more vulnerability and more immediately. Mm -hmm. And so from a ministry standpoint, jumping into a conversation like last week with a woman I was praying with whose nephew just stole her car and she's kind of at her wits end and hitting rock bottom. And just for me as an avatar to say, can I put my hand on you and pray for you? Literally reaching out. And just praying over this woman who's distraught over this family crisis, you know. So those things are just some nuances that I think in the metaverse we've learned um, give a, give a little bit more opportunity than what we thought before. So, and in some respects, there's the opportunity for those moments to happen uh, more accessible than in a physical space. You know, there might be a moment in a church service where you connect and you pray for somebody when you're yeah. at one of our campuses, uh, but in the metaverse, those one-on-one conversations and pastoral yeah. moments. Uh, it actually facilitates that a little bit easier 
uh, yeah. in some respects. So I think that's an interesting thing to note. Yeah, from a creative, this gets a little bit more techy, which I know is our love language here. But but even thinking through some of the experience, you might be in what is a replica of a physical campus in the digital um, in the digital world or in the metaverse. But even thinking through how could private prayer happen in an instant. Mm-hmm. Where like if Warren needs prayer from me, he's we're just clicking a quick button and jumping into direct prayer. The world blurs out. Our audio is just the two of us right. and the, no one else can hear us. And so there's things even in the digital world you can take advantage of and enhance that actually you couldn't replicate in right. the physical world as easily. So, right. I love that. That is so cool. Um, what about like for engaging folks after they're in your space? Um, has there been a a, a, a a process for you guys or something that you've started to figure out? I mean, I'm curious about things like small groups and, and other, um, you know, things kind of outside of the Sunday service. Uh, is there, is there a process or something that you guys have kind of thought, thought about in, in terms of how to do facilitate things like that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's part of keeping the mission first, because we'll figure out how can we do life together, right? How can we grow in God's word? Um, yeah. How can we disciple? And so I think off the bat, even upon launching, people were just jumping and saying, hey, can I start a group? Yeah. Hey, do you have groups meeting? Because there is such a need to to connect personally with other people there. And so, yes, we've literally just started having groups meet. Um, one cool story is we had a guy who was listening to uh, Greg's podcast, his leadership podcast from Indonesia. And we mm-hmm. met him in the lobby and just found out his story and how he heard about us. And he just saw Life Church pop up in his Discover feed on, on Altspace, the tool that we're using. And he jumped into Life Church and actually discovered that there were other people from Indonesia joining us mm. and with them in the lobby. Now they've started a group together. And now every pretty much every Sunday morning now that you could jump in there and you'll hear people talking in their native language, this group mm. of Indonesian folks just connecting to each other. And that wouldn't have happened without the metaverse right. in that, in that instance and hearing his story and connecting him to the people there too, from Indonesia. So that's awesome. So yes, we're, we're exploring some of those ideas and groups and how does the expression of what our mission looks like? Um, how does it look in the metaverse? That's so cool. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of fun. I, I was reading a, a study yesterday. I heard, I heard a podcast with a study. I think it was from Cornerstone church in Cincinnati. You guys maybe have seen it too, but, uh, something like 80 some percent of Gen Z, um, have met like at least two people that they consider close friends online. And like one, one guy that met a person uh, online and then ended up having him like, like as the best man at his wedding. And that was the first time that they had interacted like in person. Um, yeah. And it just, it's just amazing to see how uh, within, you know, uh, the world and, and the next generation with Gen Z, like community is still something that's important and it's, it's of, of the most importance and finding tools like this that you can engage digitally within community, um, is, is really key. So that's really cool. Yeah. And I always, I always find it ironic because when we talk about this, like can community happen digitally? It's like, well, this call right here, like yeah, I'm uh-huh. actually going to know you mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. and like what stirs your heart about ministry and the mission and just hearing the questions. So us connecting right now is even a form of that. So, right. yeah. We see it. We see it happen all the time across um, just our digital channels too. And just an interesting observation is that when people are asking those questions, and sometimes they might be coming from a critical mindset, they're putting those opinions and statements out there digitally as well. It's like so that's the platform that they're using yeah. to say, "Man, I don't know about this." And yeah. and again, we're 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 not in a, a posture of okay, everybody's got to go do this. It's yeah. something that's kind of who we are. Yeah. Um, uh, but earnestly, like we're just trying to live out our calling and our mission. And, and this is just another tool and a vehicle that we're using to do that. Yeah. And like my relationship with my wife, like years ago when texting just started and was super cumbersome, if you remember, like tapping all the number pads to eight, get to the letter eight, you want. Four, yeah. four, four. But I was jumping into text and my wife was is a little bit more, not averse, but she's slower to adapt to new technology, but she comes along for the ride with me. And so she finally jumped into texting and honestly, it's just another bridge that enhances our relationship and communication that sure. probably our relationship would look a lot d- more different and our communication may be less stronger if we didn't have a texting tool to, to you know, reach out to people during the day and just connect. So, yeah. But it's also, it's not just texting. Yeah. yeah. You still call. Yeah. You still go on dates. Yeah. Yep. You still are. So we're not advocating one or the other. We're yeah. advocating both and both yeah. and it's multiple tools. Uh, and it's multiple multiple avenues for us to reach people. Yeah, 
That's cool. So yeah, let, let's talk about some of the, the learnings as far as the challenges. Um, you know, I, I know we're still in the early days, but I want to talk a little bit about the challenges and the, also just the encouragements uh, to churches. So what, what have been some of the things that you've encountered, whether it's technically or physically or with people, um, you know, human resources, what, what have some, been some really key learnings that you guys have discovered already in the process? Yeah, it's a great question. And yeah, with anything so new, and that's also just starting to really progress, like you're going to run into some speed bumps. Um, the I wouldn't be intimidated, though, to think like if something is so unknown, it's like insurmountable. The more we've actually jumped into it, it's it's been a lot, it's been more simpler to understand and solve some of these problems. But I would say from a technology standpoint, there's some very basic things like performance and scale of like having you know, we would love to have hundreds of avatars in one room, but the current platform we chose actually now as a feature where they have to limit it to 50 avatars per room, but they added a feature that actually c clones your whole environment over and over, depending on your audience connecting. So we can have an infinite amount of rooms of 50 people as it progresses. And so that's something you can't just do on a whim with your campus, right? So you can't snap your fingers and then all of a sudden you got the physical campus right next door people are going to. And so there's things that the technology is learning how to adapt to and innovate to scale um, more people connecting. And I think that's just going to come with time. Um, a lot of the conversations we're having with some of these people who own these platforms, it's the number one problem they're trying to solve too. Um, and it's a little bit of the complexity of how avatars are you know, interacting and engaging and just the processing of all the individual movements that technology is starting to facilitate even better. Um, so that is a, that was a challenge and, and is still a challenge. But honestly, as a part of it, we we really embrace and like because when we have 50 people in a room, it actually draws us closer to community and connection with each other. And then we can have 50 other rooms of 50 people that we're launching volunteers out into in the same instance. And so there's some benefits even to that that we're just taking advantage of. Um, the other piece I'd say that's challenging, and some platforms are trying to solve this. Like once you're once you're in the headset. You're not as connected to the other devices you rely on, whether it's your phone or laptop or desktop. And so I could see like just better communication happening where there's integration of technologies, just so you're more aware of both worlds you're living in in this, in this sense. Um, and then just easy transfer of information. Obviously, we're, we're, our mission is to connect to these people and have relationships to help lead them to be fully devoted in their walk with Christ. And so Part of that is just easy ways to help people be known and feel needed. And so if there was just a better way just to one click, you're sharing your email of interest. Um, currently, how we're solving that is we have a Discord channel because a lot of the people in these environments are very used to that. And so we'll use Discord to stay in touch, to follow up with next steps, to send links, to help sign up people with their you know accounts into our system so that we can communicate with them. We'll have people at our virtual just info wall and they'll be on their desktops in VR so that it's easy for them just to fill out information. And so, again, those are speed bumps. They're small things. They're feature advancements that are going to be coming that right now there are workarounds that just are a little slower than the ideal. So, Sure. I, I just think with any new innovation or technology, there's layers of discovery yeah. that you don't understand until you start walking the path. So if you're, if you're in a ministry and you think, hey, I'm called to this, but I don't know... Uh, Steps five, seven, mm. twelve. You may not. Uh oh, Zoom is not happy at the moment. <laughs> we'll give him a second. Give Warren and, and Greg a second to get back in the room. I still see lots of people in VR, which is awesome. Oh, there we go. We got him. Hey guys, sorry. Zoom, I think took a took a break for a second there. Oh, no. We got you back. Oh, no. Well, uh, where 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 do we leave off? It was, uh, you were talking about, I think, some of the layers of... of okay, okay um, great, great. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was, just, I was just making the point of, even if you look back at iOS, and when I got my first iPhone was 08, and you look at the difference of that software to today, yeah. just the constant development, you know, Apple would not have seen, this is, this is the roadmap. It's, they're just taking the next step and yeah. making the product better and better and better. And so my encouragement is, mm -hmm. if you're a church and you're thinking, I, I'd like to explore this, but you don't know the answers... Um, to the steps further down the road, and that's the inhibitor to get started. Yeah. We don't know those answers either. Yeah, jump we're, in. We're, we're making those discoveries as as we go along. And so there's these stages that we're becoming more consciously competent yeah. as we yeah. take the next step. Yeah. Uh, but I would encourage people that those discoveries, 
you learn best while you're in the game. And so yeah. if you jump in, um, that would be my, uh, again, encouragement to you. Yeah, there's a great scripture, right? We can make our plans, but the Lord guides our steps. <laughs> and so part of like committing to the steps is really yeah. part of it. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. learning, being educated. And honestly, that's our posture is just to be poised and ready. And so this is a learning time where hopefully what we're gathering now can be even more just taken advantage of for future opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. What, what kind of encouragement and insight would you give to other churches um, who are kind of on the fence about doing something like this? I mean, I know you're not, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's not going to be, yeah, go buy an Oculus and uh, set up your space and get, get, you know, learn unity and, and all this stuff, you know, like, what, what, what would you say to a church that's kind of like, you know what, I want to I wanna be able to have a digital expression and I don't know where to start? Yeah, I think off the bat, I know Warren, you could add to this too. Um, I think it first starts with your mission. And again, just mm-hmm. to reiterate, it's, it's not going to be the solution for all churches, but I think really discerning and praying through, is this something we should be exploring and then commit to explore? I think even at the, the very base level, just staying educated around this because yeah. it's something that is going to adapt to culture very fast and already is. Just being able to speak to it, understand it. Um, a lot of what the benefit of this podcast is doing today, I mean, is that. And so just your heart to actually jump into this event says that you're willing to learn. Um, and then mission first, just as you jump in and explore um, you will start to see like where this could line up with your mission. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Like what I, what I can't see right now, transparently is all of the churches connecting right now and all of the priorities you have currently. Right. And so I can't tell you, Hey, this needs to jump up to number one or two or three or not at all. And so I think that's something you could just commit to bring to your leadership, to bring to your mission. And man, if it hits a bullseye for what you are uniquely called to do as a church, Man, I just say go for it, and we're here to help. Yeah, I think when I have conversations with churches who call and they ask uh, what technology we're using or what kind of cameras we have in the back room, what's our video switcher, these are, these are really good uh, conversations to have. And we are always talking about the technical tools. The metaverse, VR, this is just another one of those tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always go to the approach first. The approach always trumps the tool. And so to mm-hmm. me, it's what Greg said is connecting to the why. I think of a story from a book called Experiencing God by Henry Black, mm-hmm. right? And there, there's a story of a pastor who in his prayer time and seeking God of what is next for his church, uh, he just felt impressed on his heart and called to start a bus ministry. And he doesn't have a CDL. They don't have a bus. He doesn't know the first thing about a bus ministry. Innovative, man. <laughs> right? But he just says, you know what? I'm going to take that next step you know, and does the, the right things to, to acquire a bus and then starts busing in people from nearby neighborhoods and the church mm-hmm. attendance explodes. And when that does, obviously he starts to get some sort of notoriety. He's the conference speaker du jour. It starts giving out plans on here's how to start a bus ministry. And other pastors take those plans and they install their bus ministry at their church and it fails. Mm-hmm. And it's not successful. And it's, and it's because what he was teaching was the skill of here's the mechanics of how to start a bus ministry, but stepping over, this is what God called me to do. And I yeah. discovered that in my prayer time with him. And so yeah. not to bring it back to the seminary spiritual stuff, but it all starts there for us. And mm-hmm. it's like, if your church is called to use de- technology mm-hmm. or digital environments to reach people, this could be a very uh, valid expression of that calling. Yeah, uh, but if you're not called to that, that's okay too. You know, we don't want to be in an posture of we're mandating that this is the way or this is what every church needs to yeah. do. It, but it's clearly what is what we're called to. And so, yeah. what we don't want to do is give away everybody a, a roadmap of just a bus ministry. We yeah. really want to lead from the heart and the why, yeah. and, and connect what we're doing to our calling. Yeah, and and I say this with extreme sensitivity and just. Understanding there are pastors out there too who would just admit, you know, I'm just naturally tech averse. I don't understand it. I just, it confuses or it seems like it could take too much time off of my schedule to like try to figure out when I've got a ton of other things and needs to meet. And we totally get that. And this, this might sound like, sound like a counterpoint to what Warren just said, but it's not. It's actually just situational. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's, it's interesting or, or it's actually very important for a pastor to recognize is this, is this my tech aversion that's keeping me from actually what God might be calling us to? And to that pastor, I would say, man, get some people around who are passionate about leveraging technology 
and prayerful about, could this really match our mission? Yeah. Because I had a story over Christmas. I had a pastor friend of mine who was actually very kind of anti-technology, honestly, but love him to death. His church is great. He's a phenomenal leader. But uh, he put the headset on and he stayed in it for like an hour and a half and came out of it and just was had this aha moment mm-hmm. of like, and he started listing all the things that they could do with his heart for missions, the ministry. And so there's, there's a part of this too, that's just being open enough to learn and really explore and see, do I have the right people around me? If it's yeah. not going to be me, the one, you know, turning the knobs, but getting the right people around me who can help forward this mission if you feel called to it. Yeah, that's so good. And I would just uh, piggyback on top of that and just say, if you do launch this, one of the most important things you can do is make sure that you resource it well. It's mm-hmm. not a passive ministry. It's something that you have to actively participate in. And so that may not be, uh, like you said, the, the pastor at a, at a, a different size church mm-hmm. where they're the person maybe that wears six different hats. Yeah. Maybe they need to resource a team to come alongside of them and help uh, yeah. carry out that mission and vision. Uh, yeah. Resource it well. Yeah. We've loved the volunteers who have jumped in like day one. And honestly, starting to like build our, what was our first like portable location and just seeing people passionate and jumping in to do this is, is pretty cool. So you can find those people, identify them and unleash them. Yep. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure you have a lot of, a lot of volunteers that are, uh, you know, really interested in, you know, they, they, especially, you know, you we talk about people that might not be interested in, in, in attending in person, but might be willing, you know, whether that's social anxiety or physic, f- being physically unable or whatever. But I mean, I didn't even think about that from a volunteer perspective too, that maybe you have somebody who's just, you know, not comfortable volunteering at a, at a physical campus for whatever reason, but this might be a great way for them to serve too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're not limited to your geographical reach mm. to yeah. your volunteer. Serious. Yeah. They, they, now we are global. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. It's cool. All right, guys. Well, um, I have a few just rapid fire kind of technical questions and I know you all have open, um, I know y'all are, 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 are always so willing again to, to share your, 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 your knowledge and your resources. So feel free to kind of point, you know, to any direction or, you know, defer these questions. But, uh, as far as getting started, um, can you just kind of give give a quick run, rundown of what what's involved in actually setting up a, a metaverse uh, church or campus? Sure, and I think as you mentioned, open. I th- this might be a good time just to let you know about the resource available. I know some people might not be able to make it through the whole podcast or come back and listen later, but yeah. don't want you to miss this opportunity. Yeah. So I love our open network team. They um, their heart is to equip the Capital C Church, and it's not just Life Church content. It's a ton of partnerships and other churches who have jumped on the platform to give away stuff for free. And so I just want to list a few things quickly that's that's available to you today. Today was the day to announce it. If you go to open.life.church forward slash metaverse, we'll put that link in the chat as well. You're going to see lessons that we've learned about the metaverse. Some you've already heard today. A quick start guide to setting up church in the metaverse. Yeah. A guide for leading through small groups in the metaverse. Um, a link to walk through the Life Church Metaverse campus building. And then one of the things we're super excited about, just removing this as a roadblock, is we're giving away our full unity design of our campus, stripped of all our branding, so that you can have a building in the metaverse completely free. So if you go to open.life.church forward slash metaverse, man, bless us to be a blessing to you. Yes. And we would just love for you to take advantage of of some or all of that uh, information. So cool. That's awesome. So you talked about a few different things. Um, the, the, I, I, I know uh, that'll be an awesome resource and an awesome way for a lot of churches who may be not, a, not, not at all familiar and be able to actually understand, um, you know, how to get started with it. So uh, thanks so much for that. Um, what, uh, you know, what should churches make sure to, to, to do in order to do this right and to not necessarily skimp in the process? Yeah. I just realized I didn't answer your first question. I just went right into the shameless plug. For, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so getting back to what the simply, what does it take to get started? Yeah. Um, I will tell you, there are several platforms in the metaverse that have these world creators around community that you can, you know, investigate. Obviously meta is one that's building things called worlds. They've got venues out there. Um, Microsoft built a platform called Altspace VR. Um, there's VR chat. There's just several out there. I would say just explore and see what matches your approach best. 
Uh, we currently are on Altspace VR. Um, just to, to get started, we felt like it from the ground up, and I know our metaverse attenders right now are in Altspace VR. It just helped us achieve what we wanted to um, at first, but we're looking at all the other places. Um, but what that took just simply to get started was we jumped on altspacevr.com. <clears throat> we created our own account. So you create a user account, and then you can go into your worlds and create a world. And something just to delineate between specifically is this idea of worlds and events. Creating a world is something that you could either make private or public. And if it is public, then it is a world that is always accessible 24-7. Think about it as like just like your physical location is always there. People can yeah. come knock on the doors, right? Technically, people could come in. You could have office hours. You could have prayer times. You could have group meetings. All the, all the things you experience like in the, the real world with a facility. Then there are events, which think about it like service times. There are events that you have that are actually, it could be themed, it could be a message series, it could be a, just a group getting together to talk about something. And you hold an event at a time and you attach that event to your world. And that's how we currently operate um, within Altspace right now. Now, the beautiful thing is, let's say you download our Unity designs, you're like, this isn't going to work for us. The beautiful thing is there are great templates currently on Altspace VR I think there's a dozen or so for varying contexts that you can just choose and get launched into. What I would say just, which was a huge learning for us was, was create a world first, create a world that will attach to an event that has a template. If you're not going to do a full campus build, mm -hmm. because then you don't have to go in every week and, and re rebuild it. that template to mm -hmm. look like. So it was kind of like portable for church for us. Honestly, we were going into our template every week and putting up signs and like basically almost like we didn't have to have scaffolding, which is the beautiful thing. We just fly around and just put, up a, put up a poster, but, um, but that'll save you some time if you just get your world established and attach your, your event to a template and, and go from there. Yeah. And in that original question, you talked about, you want to make, you know, what are the things that we would make sure to do so churches don't skimp mm -hmm. on it, use the word. I'm just thinking like to get started, you could totally skimp. You could get started yeah. very quickly. Uh, again, creating if, if the platform is all space VR and then just leveraging templates. Yeah. Um, you can get something up and running pretty quickly. Um, and then obviously uh, you need to have a headset or something to, to, to utilize. So it could be an Oculus quest, HTC Vive, or mm -hmm. Microsoft has the mixed reality headsets that are all compatible. Yep. Um, so the tools and the physical tools that you need, uh, the barrier to entry is pretty low in terms of cost. And then with mm -hmm. the amount of templates and, and stuff that are available, you could spin something up pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. And I would say it's, and this is a little bit of our posture too, is like, what we mean by latest doesn't mean greatest. We want, we want the relationship to almost like help the technology disappear, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. some of your greatest apps are so personally engaging, you kind of forget like what's all the mechanics it, yep. behind it. And that's the hope too, is like don't skimp on the relational factor yeah. of this. The community, the people who are there engaging, what questions are helpful for them to ask? Like how do they connect with others and what experiences? How are you, how are you setting up the different environments for those people to connect? Because at the heart of it, I mean, you've heard just a few stories today. Those are the things that are the wins of, of doing church in VR. The win is the relationships that are connecting the lives that are changing. And so just as, just as actually just as important, if not more important than just getting technically set up, yeah. having the people factor there and have it be compelling and engaging and very personal. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. I'm so glad you hit on that because that was actually one of my first things too. When I was able to jump into the Life Church campus a few weeks ago, my biggest kind of aha moment was when I was walking through the door and somebody with a red shirt on waved and said, Hey Nate, how's it going? And I'm like, this is amazing. This is like, you know, this is just what I'd feel going into a building. And, um, so, and that's, that's the approach of it is how can we duplicate in the digital environment as much as we can, what we, what you would experience at a physical campus. And, and that's, that's the win for us. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of peppering in all these learnings too, but I'd love just to get these out for you guys yeah. too. But the thing we've learned too, about people just popping into the church experience too, um, is that people are in the, in these spaces, there is just a natural desire to explore and what we, what was a surprise to us is how easy we saw when we would send people out to other worlds together to go invite people to church, just how open people were to coming. Like, and it honestly felt like less of a barrier than you might experience in real life with handing sure, an invite. Sure. 
because there's just this natural desire for people to see what's been created. Yeah, it's it's kind of like going into an art studio. There's just people, whether you agree or like the art, it's like people are just willing to look at it and just see what it's about. Yeah. And so from an invite culture standpoint, it's been very cool to see just the various religious backgrounds, various beliefs, even those against Christianity, just coming in just to see like, oh, okay, does this actually match the opinion I've had or does this, does this change it? So, yeah. That's cool. What, what kind of human structures, I mean, is it, is it similar? You know, we talked about volunteers. We talked about people that are involved in, in the actual work of the ministry within this virtual space. Does, does it look pretty similar in terms of, um, you know, volunteer and staffing requirements and the people that actually make, make it, you know, make the church happen? Yeah, I think you're going to, as a church, whatever model you have to help, you know, relationships connect and engage, I think could transfer to this space. Because honestly, a lot of the same rules apply. Um, Some things that are just different than being in a chat room is there's a lot more visual cues on how people are engaging with you. Like if Mm. I'm just talking to Warren right now and he sees me look away at you, he knows I'm not engaged with him anymore. Mm. So there are just social cues that exist in the metaverse that don't exist in a chat room necessarily. And so there is a lot of, I think, training just like you would do at your campus to help people know, like, how do we, as a host team in the lobby, how do we interact? What is, what is our spot? Where do we stand? Um, technically, like, there's a, there could be a tech team that's just involved in how do we get the video set up and make sure everything's running on time. Yeah. And the pre-service loop is rolling. And we've got, you know, the appropriate zones of our building. This is a new thing for Metaverse, but even the appropriate zones of our building that are muted at the right times because we don't want distraction. And how are we communicating to everyone? Do we want to communicate to everyone at once through like a direct message that they all see? Or are we doing individual direct messages? Are we friending people? And so there's just in the game room, are we set up in there to play and just to meet new people? So it's a space that you're putting people in to connect with each other. And a a lot of the same rules apply and actually shockingly will feel more familiar to you than not. Yeah. It's just about being intentional in Mm. every intentional. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's great. I think that's a great segue. Um, You know, one of the videos that you guys have on open and one of the things that we wanted to talk through was I believe Ryan giving a tour of the actual VR campus. Um, Mm -hmm. And for those that haven't been in in the space, uh, we'd love to uh, be able to kind of share that with them and, and maybe just talk through a little bit about what that actually looks like uh, in a virtual environment. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and play that and, and talk through it here. Hey, welcome to Life Church Metaverse. My name is Ryan. I'm so glad that you're here today. Let me show you around. Check it out. Outside, we've got people that are showing up today or during our Sunday morning service, and people from all over the world are joining Life Church Metaverse. As you walk into this space, you'll see our lobby. Our lobby, we've got our info wall to your right, you can see, and then to your left, we've got a game room. The info wall is where we help people take next steps, and the game room is where we engage people in conversation, and we're just playing games with them, having fun with them. Ultimately, it, it all leads to the auditorium. We're going to experience something together that is so powerful, and that is time of worship with one another, of, with people from all over the world, and an engaging message from our pastor, Pastor Craig Rochelle. We're just so excited about what God is doing right here at Life Church Metaverse. Let me quickly show you the auditorium as we're getting ready for service. Come check it out. <laughs> Guys. Hi. And as people walk in here, they're directed to, to sit in our seats over here. As you can see, they're surrounded by video screens. This is our live feed from our online service. And so, so you, as a church, you're able then your live stream of your service to engage people with the people God has called you to reach all over the world with your church. Man, I hope. I hope that God continues to do amazing things through your church and potentially through your church right here in the metaverse. So cool, guys. So I, I have to ask, first of all, is that is that an actual, like, complete clone of a physical campus? That's a great question. Yeah, so originally, yes. So this is very interesting. So we took our East Kansas City location design, which is one of our newest designs, and we put it into Unity. And we also realized, hey, we don't need bathrooms. We don't need. <laughs> we, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, right. We don't need offices. So some of the space is converted. Like the, the office space now is the game room. We made the bathrooms into like what could be prayer rooms or group rooms. So, yeah. So a little bit altered, but but somewhat. Uh, essentially, the footprint identical. is the same. Yeah. yeah, it's it's those actual construction and design drawings that yeah. we 3D rendered. And so we, we tried to keep the experience as consistent as possible. Yeah. And something to the personal connection there, you might have seen in the distance, we launched a, a family wall. And that was really our desire to help people feel like, these. hey, these are real people to be known. And that's what just one of our values as a church is yeah. to help people feel needed and known. And so we launched this family wall where people have to go to a link, submit a photo. We actually mail them a Metaverse sticker to put on their headset or desktop or laptop, whatever. And we put that photo on the wall. And it's just fun how it's been another just engagement point for people to gather on the wall. And I'm like, hey, that's me and my wife, uh, you know, or hey, guess who I am? It's kind of becomes like a guess who game a little bit. So sure. just one of those things. I know we didn't have time to jump into, but um, you might have seen that at a distance. It's very cool. Uh, the I, I can assume, you know, and, and the reason for making it feel like it physical campuses to, to make people kind of feel comfortable and uh, and also to, to make it, um, you know, more of an example of something that they may experience in, in a, in a physical space. But like, was there any other kind of reasoning for you guys that you, that, that you wanted to make it as close to real life? Yeah. I mean, there's some things I, I'd say again, still testing because there's some ideas that because the flexibility of how you can create these worlds that you can create a little bit more aha moments. Yeah. And so we're thinking about, Oh, could there be something that's a little different in the auditorium when people enter? Like, does it enter them into this more outdoor environment? Cause guess what? Weather's not an issue, <laughs> you know, and you can, yeah. you can do some really creative things just in the moment. Um, they're a little easier. And so there's flexibility there. I think there is, there might be a piece there strategically. That's like, cause we want people to feel um, familiar with us, whether they walk into a physical building or into or experience our digital expression. And so there's a piece of that, that I think helps remove the barrier um, to them, even just jumping it. Let's say they moved to Florida, Wellington, Florida, and jumped into our Wellington campus. We'd want them to feel and have the same experience or something very close to so that it kind of removes that barrier too. And so that that's a piece of it. I think there's also some really creative and fun things we could do differently in the space and take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you mentioned the game rooms too. I think I was in there the other day and there was like a, a room that had a banner that said like Zach's room or something like that. Uh, just some, some really cool spaces with a lot of cool like interactables. Uh, it's been awesome to see how you guys have been able to use, use what's available within that space too, to again, further create community. Yeah. And that was, again, that was another test of, cause Zach, the, the story I told before who helped, you know, partner with this organization, donating headsets, mm -hmm. he wanted that week to kind of host his, all of his friends coming in. And so we're like, you know what, we'll put the sign up. If you're going to bring all the people, we'll, we'll call it Zach's room and you could just play, play games in here and just honestly keep it safe in an environment that we can help monitor. And just these kids have a lot of fun. So, yeah. All right. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you guys so much. Uh, really appreciate your, your guys' time. We're going to get to some Q&A, so people that are watching live, uh, don't go anywhere. Um, but Warren, Greg, anything else that, that you would add uh, before we kind of move on that I haven't asked or uh, that, that you'd really want to offer as encouragement or advice or insight to churches, whether they're thinking about innovating in VR or innovating in any other way? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm going to jump in. Go for it, bro. I would just say right now, um, again, we have the posture of what we are learning. And so we're discovering those lessons. So we don't consider ourselves the experts at this. But at the same time, we just wanted to make sure, I'll reiterate, that if uh, there's technical questions, a technical how to, uh, we're constantly going to be adding stuff in those learnings to open.life.church. Uh, slash metaverse, including trying to give away as many resources as we can. So like the building. So we touched on that just briefly, and I just wanted to make sure we hit on that again. Um, so Greg and I are, are, are talking a lot about the why and kind of mm -hmm. the process oriented stuff. Um, but if you're really looking for the mechanics of how you execute that, uh, we're trying to make as much of that available as possible on open. So please check that out. Yeah, that's great. I don't know that I would add anything to that other than just to avoid being a broken record. Um, we've seen pastors come in on a Sunday morning just to kind of jump into Life Church and learn, and man, we welcome that. So if you're if you're going to check it out on Sunday, 
man, just let us know in advance. You know, you could email myself, uh, greg.gackle at life.church, um, or you could email metaverse at life.church. That's probably the best way to get a hold of one of our team members. And we'll make sure to meet you there and kind of give you a tour and walk you around. So that's awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Resi Equip. Like we mentioned before, make sure you check out that link in the description for lots more resources from today's events, including a Q&A with Greg and Warren. And while you're at it, consider subscribing to us on YouTube. It's a great way to be able to access more content like this, including stories, interviews, and more all related to live production and creative online experiences. Thanks so much to Greg and Warren for joining us today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.